Good morning, everyone. Welcome back on a brand new day with a brand new guest. This is your host, Manal Bukhari, who is bringing you new guests from different parts of the world to share their insights and into their journey and the do's and don'ts when applying to jobs. Today, we have someone who has been involved in discussion around Bitcoin and the market trends shaping the crypto space. If you're into blockchain and how it's revolutionizing the tech industry, please take a seat. Please welcome Rochelle. Hi, Rochelle. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. So, um, Rochelle, I'd love to understand what led you to the company that you're working with and why are you working with this company? I mean, there are a lot of blockchain companies out there. What is something that attracted you to this company? Um, So, yeah, so initially I got into the crypto space. Um, I was living in Argentina and a lot of people in Buenos Aires were turning to Bitcoin um, as a way of storing value. And I became interested in Bitcoin. So this was in 2017. Um, I came back to, I'm in Boston now. So I came back to Boston. I was just there for six months working. Um, and so I came back to Boston and I discovered Algorand, which was just launching. Algorand is a, um, you could think of it as a, another Bitcoin platform. So Bitcoin has its own blockchain platform and there's tons of others out there. Um, And so Algorand is another blockchain platform um, with faster transactions. And so I worked with them in marketing and community building. Um, And it was really interesting. I really loved it there. And then I discovered Flipside Crypto, where I currently work. They're also Boston-based. And what's really cool about them and quite different from the other startups in the space is that they are so focused on data and we analyze tons of different blockchains data. Um, So you're not just focused on one project, you get to analyze tons of them, um, which I thought was really exciting. And um, yeah, it's a different approach to the space. You get to see kind of how it evolves and um, yeah, you don't have to focus on just one. Um, So that's how I landed at Flipside. And basically what we do now is we create software for anyone to access our labeled blockchain data and create dashboards. So if you are focused on a token that you like, you can use our software to um, create your own dashboards and understand how people are using the token, see what they're doing with it, where are they, you know, if you go, if you're deep into DeFi, you know, by yield farming, all of those tools, there's not a lot of, um, you know, the space is very new, so there's not a lot out there yet. Um, and so you can think of it a, bit, a little bit like Google Analytics with blockchain data instead of internet data. Um, yeah, and so we're in our beta phase. So there's a lot of interacting with the space and getting feedback and improving our product. And yeah, very, very new product in a very new space. <laughs> that sounds absolutely wonderful, especially the personalized approach that you take. And it's something new. So you guys don't have a lot of competitors. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few, but they're also very new. So I think we're all kind of learning from each other and there's definitely a a huge community aspect to everything. It's not like you launch a, like a product and it's all ready and everything's internal. It's you put it out there and you get the community to start playing around with it and testing it. So that's very different, I think, than other more traditional technology spaces, I would say. Um, everything is supposed to be open source and, um, yeah, fully public, transparent, open. Um, So that's pretty exciting. It's a different way of working. That sounds absolutely amazing. And I mean, I was in Buenos Aires, Argentina myself, so absolutely loved the culture there. I lived there for around four months, had to leave because of the pandemic. But just Um, the vibe there, the people there, and the food, the empanadas filled with cheese and spinach, that was yeah. always a cherry on top. Definitely miss it, but um, it was a shortcut journey, but I think it was I mean, an amazing experience itself. What neighborhood did you live in Argentina? In Buenos I Aires? was in Palermo, Soho. I was near Palermo as well, around 20 minutes by car, but it was definitely, especially the colorful vibe and everything, it was lovely. Yeah, yeah, it's a great city. I love it too. So I'd love to hear, Rochelle, um, regarding what are the some skills that you deem important when people are specifically applying for tech jobs or in that specific industry? Yeah, so I think tech is maybe a little broad, but um, at least in, you know, any 
new tech, so at least for me focused on blockchain, you definitely need to be willing to obviously do something completely different outside of your comfort zone and use the tools that you already have and the knowledge you already know to like, you know, tackle something completely new and not be too afraid to do something you've never done before, no matter how much experience you have. I think it's such new technology that no one necessarily is an expert in it. Um, so, you know, not being afraid of the unknown, it sounds a little cheesy, but I think it's super important to have people who are like, all right, let's, you know, I know enough and now I need to, you know, figure this out, um, and sort of persevering through it. Um, I think there's a lot of collaboration. I think there's a lot less of like me, 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 you have to be open to just knowing your limits and knowing where you need others. Um, so I think when I look at these values, we think of it as our culture at our startup, but I think it is like some people don't work well in those environments and would be very stressed. Um, so it's sort of fast pacing, new, and getting energy from that versus feeling drained. Um, I think that's what I've learned that I love, but it's not for everyone. <laughs> That's interesting because when I used to think of tech and everything, I used to think of people sitting in front of their computer and just working on their own. But then hearing from you that it's a very collaborative approach and everything, that's something definitely new for me as well as I'm pretty sure it would be something new for guests as well. Yeah, I think if there's just a lot of, I mean, this might be blockchain specific, but there needs to be so much transparency throughout the whole process of building that you need to be, you can't be alone working on it and then just release it into the wild. Like you need to create the first steps and then have the community contribute, have people test and break things. Um, I think it's also so new that no one, yeah, comes in as an expert. And so you have to collaborate with others. Um, I think those are really important. And actually, if you are too like individualistic in the way you work, I think it often uh, doesn't work well for such a small startup in such a new space. Um, that's probably, I think it's more suited for a bigger company where you have a clear role and clear tasks and you get it done. So I think, I don't know about tech in general, but um, the crypto space, definitely smaller teams collaborating all the time, sharing everything you're doing, open to feedback, um, letting others play with it and break it and fix it. So yeah, I think it is different. Um, that definitely and, yeah, is very amazing. insightful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. I really good. appreciate it, especially because it's a new approach. So I think um, one other thing that I'd like to know is because it's a new company, it's a new tech startup, how does your company assess job applicants when people are applying for your company, for instance? Like, is there an interview process? How would you recommend people preparing for that? Or is there any tips for people who would, for example, want to apply to Flipside Crypto? Yeah, I mean, I think um, obviously there's a part of the interview that is just hard skills. Like if we're looking for an engineer, are you able to do these specific tasks? Um, we try to break it down. Different interviewers will be focused on different specific things. So you have less of a bias when you interview someone. If you're just generally trying to sense if they would be a good fit, sometimes you fall into these biases that we're trying to fight. So each interviewer on our end has a specific um, like capability or so there's different categories that they're looking for. So one is skills. Another one will be values. Uh, do we share the same values? And then the last one is um, now I'm forgetting. Um, the values also is like what drives them, like what motivates them in terms of their work. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a third one. Oh, they're, their resume. So like one is, are they able to do this today? Okay. But then also if we're looking for someone with three years of experience, you know, maybe they don't have enough. And then if each interviewer is focused on a specific category, um, you have more um, like straightforward feedback, if that makes sense. And less about emotion or just like values. <laughs> yeah. So in terms of tips, I mean, I think, you know, be yourself, People, I think it's in your best interest to ask the questions that matter to you and to tell the truth. I mean, not that anyone lies, but just like I try to think of when I'm being interviewed, I don't want to start a job and realize I don't like it. Um, yeah. So, you know, obviously come prepared with examples, usually, or stories to tell about how you handle different things. 
Um, but mostly just also yourself try to be interviewing them to see if you're the right match. Cause there's nothing worse than starting a job and realizing like, I don't really like my manager or I don't like, and I've done this in the past where I wanted the job so bad because we're, we really obviously want to get hired that I didn't interview my manager well enough, or I didn't ask questions myself. Um, I think there are no dumb questions and if they matters to you, then you should ask. <laughs> and when I'm interviewing, I'm looking, yeah, for someone who, you know, is interested in the space because there's so much work that you have to have an interest in it. It can't just be slaving away every day. Like it needs to be like, this also is some type of passion for you. Um, so if there's an interest, you will go further. Then if you're like focused on the environment and now you're working in blockchain, it might be a little, you know, <laughs> off topic or boring. Um, it depends what the role you're interviewing for. Um, I So I lead marketing sure. for a startup. And so I would, for example, ask, there's usually an exercise where you can just show how you write and if you're into writing because we produce a lot of content. Um, yeah, I think that's it. It's kind of all over the place. <laughs> that's definitely really helpful. And I, I think it's really good, especially if you are wanting to pursue a career in that, I think you should definitely pull out a paper or a pen to take notes of what Ro Rochelle just said. Well, thank you so much, Rochelle, for be coming on the show and sharing your expertise with us. Yeah, with an increase interest in blockchain industry and people could like people could definitely use all of the information that you provided as a segue into that specific industry to pursue a career in that well thank you so much Rochelle it was a pleasure having you and that's it for today this is of course this is your host Manal Bukhari signing off I'll be back next week with more inspiring guests to share their wisdom and their knowledge with all of you